Hey everybody, it's Ben Loop. In this video, we're going to be discussing how the EPA and our government is trying to destroy the motorsports industry and end the aftermarket modification industry to pretty much all vehicles. So, if you're at all watching anything in automotive news, especially like on the YouTube channels, any of these uh, big content creators, these well-known people, they're, they're starting to get on it and talk about it. Uh, what's going on with the EPA and our government. So what is happening is the EPA and our government is trying to implement these overreaching laws and rules uh, federally that will do two things that everybody's really bringing up. And I'm going to bring up a third that nobody's talking about yet. One of the main things that's being spelled out in this, these laws they're trying to implement is you can no longer convert a street car into a race car. And the other thing is, is you cannot modify your street car in any way. Well, I'll get into some details on that, and then we'll talk about the third thing that, that I think people are missing in the, in the grand scheme of things. So first thing is you cannot convert your street car into a race car. That's across the board. No individual can do it. No company that does these kind of modifications can do it. There's, you cannot convert, so if you buy anything that has been manufactured by any of the manufacturers, Ford, Chevy, Nissan, you name the brand, and of course, all those are building street cars. You cannot take that street car and change it into a race car. So what that would do is, is completely destroy the, especially the grassroots uh, motorsports industry, but a lot of just everything up to just the elite. And so what that does is again, create this class war, basically all the middle class and lower class now is taking out, they've been taken out of the, the motorsports industry. The only people that will be afford be able to uh, afford to race anymore are the extremely wealthy and extremely elite and influential. Because the only people that will be able to race anymore are people that can afford a race team and a race facility that can build one-off race cars. Well, I don't know about you, but there's not a lot of people I know of that can afford to build a one-off race car. This industry, this Everything about the race car scene, and this is not just race cars, this is motorcycles, uh, ATVs, uh, boats, everything in, in that kind of realm. So you cannot just have your old Miata or find an old $500, $1,000 Miata or whatever it is, a Honda Civic or a Mustang or you name the car, spend X amount of dollars and start taking it to the racetrack. So that's gone. Second thing is, is modifications. Uh, you are not allowed to what they're trying to implement is you're, you're not allowed to make any modifications than what your car came with from the factory. So that would be lowering at this point. It kind of looks like it's going to be okay. You know, wheel changes, maybe, uh, you know, some little odds and ends, air filter change, uh, air intake change and manifold change, uh, headers, uh, exhaust change, a tune, supercharger, turbo. Those things are off limits to everyone. Not just people about talking about doing race cars, so with this bill, or with these laws they're trying to implement, is they're trying to cover both sides. The common people that just have cars they enjoy, vehicles they enjoy, motorcycles they enjoy, boats they enjoy, they're catching you and going, okay, you cannot change the intake on your car. You cannot change the exhaust on your car. You cannot tune your car, vehicle, whatever it may be. And then if you were thinking, okay, what I'll do is I'll make my car into a race car. And then I'll just be trailering it to these events. Nope, they covered that too. So that's what everybody's kind of getting irritated and talking the most about. The third thing is, that nobody's talking about, at least not that I've seen yet, is you've got to think a little bit further down the road. How is this going to be implemented? Now, this has been going on for years, and EPA now is currently, and has been over these past few years, rating these places that offer, build, and sell these modifications that you can do to your car. So those companies, especially the bigger ones, are being rated by the EPA and they pull all their information and copy, copy all their information. That's how they get your information because they've got the customer's information now from this manufacturer, builder, or seller of these products. And now they got your name that you bought an exhaust system, you bought a supercharger, you bought a mass airflow or air intake. And then once they get enough manpower and time, you'll be next. And all this is delivered with fines to a heavy degree and or criminal charges. JEGS got fined, I believe, $1.7 million. And the list goes on and on. You can you can do your own research on this stuff. 
Uh, there's one exhaust manufacturer that has just put out a release saying, hey, we got nailed by the EPA, uh, we're dealing with them, but at this point we can no longer manufacture exhaust. So who knows if they'll ever be back in business or continue their business. The other way they'll be able to track down people that have modified their cars is through what's already happening in a few states, inspections. With inspections, you'll have to pay your inspection fee at least once a year. They come in, they check everything out. Do you pass or you do fail? And then as you can imagine, there's possible fines that can go with it and or criminal charges along with the repair they're saying you have to get done before you're allowed to use your car on the road. That's how the other way they'll do it. Uh, like I say, there's some states already doing that, which I think is a complete overreach already too. This is where my third one comes up that nobody's talking about. The common person that's just trying to live their life, that cares nothing about motorsports industry, cares nothing about using their car or motorcycle or truck or whatever it is for fun. They just need a vehicle to get their kids back and forth to school. They just need a vehicle to get back and forth to work. Some of these people have a small business. They just need their vehicle to work out of. These are the people that are going to be affected by these laws, without question. Because again, the only way they can search all this down and get everybody done is through inspections. So let's just throw out an example. ABC Plumbing Service, who's been in the business for 30 plus years, he still got his 86 Econoline van that he does plumbing out of. In 2008, the catalytic converters got clogged up. He could just remove those catalytic converters for a $50 repair or a $100 repair or something like that and get back to business. But with these inspections, that's not the case anymore. They go in to inspect on his 96 Econoline van and they say, hey, you got no catalytic converters. Fine, you've got X amount of time to get these new catalytic converters installed, $1,000, $2,000 repair, or you can no longer use your vehicle. Well, there you go. This family, and maybe a couple families that this small business is supporting has now just lost their livelihood because EPA wants to make sure he's got a catalytic converter in his van. Same thing applies for just using your vehicle to get your kids back and forth to school, to get back and forth to work. All these things apply. And these people aren't modifying their cars to make them faster or just for the fun of it like we do. They just need a vehicle to get life done. That's what irritates me. And this is the fifth video I've tried to make, and I've deleted them all because I get in this crazy rant uh, of how mad that makes me. I'm sure there's a few people maybe already banging away on the on the keyboard like, oh, well, that's, that should be the case because, you know, catalytic converters and these things are, are destroying our environment. But do a small touch of research and realize that these amazing electrical vehicles that you're, you know, saying that's going to save the earth and stuff like that, where do you think this stuff comes from to build the battery, the amount of mining that happens to build the battery. What's used to mine? I mean, those things are straight up diesel gas hogs blasting in, into the ether, right? Oh yeah, and then you gotta ship this stuff that's mined to where the battery's being built, which is, comes from different countries and is built in different countries. And then that battery's gotta be shipped to where the car's manufactured. A lot of stuff happens there, a lot of shipping. And if you think ABC's Plumbing Services, 96 Econoline van, not having cats, is 0.0001% of all these shipping units that go across the oceans, the mining, the building of these factories, the building of these batteries, and shipping back and shipping over there and building the battery and then shipping back and building the car and shipping there and then shipping back to where the car is going to be sold. I'm not even getting into where do you think recharging the battery's power comes from. It isn't magic. It's some sort of a plant, some of them are coal, that powers that electrical that recharges your battery. That Econoline van is immeasurable in comparison to what is being emitted to create these wonderful batteries. Now, batteries may be the way it goes, and they may make it better. Gas may be continue the way it goes because somebody figures out how to make it better and less emissions. Hey, and I'm all for it. I'm all about taking care of our planet, for sure. But don't make the middle class and lower class suffer because our senators, our representatives don't have the foresight to see how we are going to suffer just in the common way because of their virtue signaling of how they're saving the planet. There's a lot of other things you can attack and, and get ahead of that's going to go far more than stopping a drag racer to run in a five second quarter mile. All those emissions he put out in that five seconds in comparison to the shipping unit that's running 12 miles an hour at best across our oceans. It's just virtue signaling. The long story short is there is something we can do. It's not enough, but there is something we can do that will help this 
SEMA has got a page, I'll put it in the link below, that gives you a link on a way to contact your representative and tell them how against the EPA and our government having these overreaching rules you are. Let's see if we can get this under control here, at least fighting this thing and what it is called is the RPM. I believe it's RPM Act. But anyway, the SEMA thing will show you what, what this is all about and it's trying to fight this and slow this down. It's not enough. We need to do more. Uh, I think we should be totally against car inspections, in my opinion. Far more things we can focus on. The rest of this stuff, the car inspections and all this other junk, is virtue signaling by people who have too much power to show off their virtue signaling. Again, this is my opinion. I've pulled back my rant quite a bit. This is uh, video number five. Hopefully this one flies. <laughs> but we'll see. Post up in your comments what you think, agree or disagree, uh, and I'll, I'll respond as much as I can on most of this stuff. Uh, I, I won't get into knockdown drag out. It's, this is on the verge of politics, and I'm not going to get into politics. This is a this is a fun uh, car channel, car related, and motorsports related, and, and uh, truck related, and whatever you want to call it, channel. And I'm going to kind of keep it as light hard as I can, but I also do want to do my part to save this industry. Uh, I didn't even touch on if these things happen on the the race car side and modification side, hundreds of thousands of jobs and families will be unemployed because of this decision. All I ask is click on that link. Click on a thing so tell your representative you're against this for a multitude of reasons uh, and try to be you know you don't have to be a paragraph you don't have to be long just a couple sentences uh, you know keep the language light for sure uh, that will get a lot more done and accomplished that's my opinion of all this stuff that's going on hey y'all have fun obviously what we're getting out of our vehicles is is going to become more and more difficult to do so get out there and have fun with whatever vehicle you got cars trucks motorcycles atvs boats uh, and really enjoy it as much as you possibly can because we don't know how much longer we're going to have it. Uh, hopefully we all figure out a way to make these vehicles we enjoy uh, a bit better for our environment. But to focus on us in the motorsports industry and the modification industry is comical, to say the least. That's it. That's my video. I appreciate y'all watching. God bless.